Okay, there we go. Hello everyone, how's it going team here? And this is way overdue vlog about my entrepreneur first experience. As you might have noticed by my schedule, I've been traveling a lot lately and uh, I think this is the last week is when it only basically kind of stopped, but not completely. So yeah, we've um, finally fixed on the, like the idea that we want to work on, the idea that we think is going to work. We are going to work on fitness rewards program. The idea is that you can get uh, free stuff and maybe even money or not, not even maybe not. Maybe you can get money and free stuff and some exclusive bonuses from your fitness clubs just by exercising. Essentially, that's the global idea. We are uh, talking to a bunch of companies right now, uh, trying to figure out how exactly all of that is going to work and what we're going to do. And, you know, so far it's actually going pretty well and uh, people are excited about it, which was uh, quite a surprise to me because, um, yeah, technically this is a very straightforward thing and we're already building MVP, which should be done within a couple of uh, months, not weeks. Weeks would be too much. But yeah, it's a very technically straightforward thing, uh, which potentially has like a really huge market to cover. But so we're going to see how that works out. But we already get some uh, letter of intents from uh, pretty large companies and uh, yeah, working on more essentially. So I'm going to travel more next week to get uh, or at least to negotiate more about that and see, you know, if we can kind of take off. Um, but yeah, this is the product part. Um, the EF part itself, it was slightly weird. So we did get into, um, I would maybe call it a bit of a fight with EF themselves. Um, how do I put it? Uh, they do have some valid concerns and ask valid questions about the um, state of the work of my co-founder, right? Because he has some background, he has his old company and there's like a lot of going on. And um, there are concerns, obviously there are questions that are absolutely valid and they need to be asked. And we already talked about that with him uh, personally. Um, but for whatever reason, EF guys are not willing to negotiate. So there is a number of uh, obvious solutions to the problems that they bring up and to the concerns that they have. But they are like very, um, how do you put it? They are very fixed on what they think is the correct way to go, which I don't think actually works good for everyone. And I don't think is a good approach in general to everything. So it's sort of weird. It was even weirder when they tried to sort of break us up, which is also, you know, at, at this point of time when we worked for five weeks and we have so much progress seems a bit weird. Hey, Jamal, welcome to the stream. Um, yeah, another weird thing about EF was that they wanted us to be in Berlin for all the time. And, you know, we were traveling, talking to customers. And uh, it just feels a bit weird. So they do have those lectures going on all the weeks. And uh, most of the time, so at least my experience, I was at like f beginning in the, in the beginning there. And, uh, you know, because I have experience with startups already. So this is my what, seventh, eighth startup. Um, all of the things that they were talking about is something I already know. Um, hey, Mikkel, welcome to the stream. Um, yet, uh, so yeah, basically all the lectures that I've heard from them so far were pretty obvious things for people who do startups, you know, second, third time, whatever. So even if you try it once, you will already know most of that stuff. But uh, for some reason, they wanted us to come to Berlin and listen for all of that stuff, which felt like uh, it would be a waste of time, to be honest. So it's... Um, like I get the idea that if you are, if you got into EF from, for example, academic background, or if you got into EF from, I don't know, any other background and you never did startups, all of those lectures would be immensely useful for you, right? But if you already know what you are doing, if you, if you have the idea, if you have the customers, if you just go out there and talk to them, and if you know exactly what you wanna do, it feels like forcing people to stay there is a bit weird. Uh, so yeah, it's just, just just this sort of a pretty weird uh, feeling from all of it. But, you know, it's not critically terrible. And uh, from what I gathered, actually, is the guys who are mentoring the EF, they are not the ones who are going to be deciding 
uh, on the final investment from the EF side, which was going to happen in June, I believe. So there's like two meetings. So we are going to see how that goes. But uh, as I said in the beginning, we got some letters of intent from some pretty big companies. And I think that is going to strengthen our investment case quite a lot. Um, I personally don't think we're going to be like we're going to have a huge problem raising money for this uh, because there is a significant number of existing products that basically prove that our that the market exists, right? The people want that. And it also proves that the market right now is in a pretty terrible state because if you just go and, you know, on a Google Play Store or Apple Store and uh, try to read the reviews for the things that are currently available, most of them seem to be very, very badly implemented, even though the apps are, I mean, again, the idea is rewarding people for fitness, right? So for exercising. So the idea is super straightforward, super simple, and all you have to do is literally grab the data from the fitness trackers or the phone or whatever the equipment that you have. And depending on a threshold issue rewards, right? This sounds super straightforward. And uh, for some reason, um, a lot of people can't seem to implement that properly. Although, you know, it doesn't seem hard to me, but I guess mobile apps are hard as the takeaway from this. <laughs> so we're going to see how that goes. Um, so um, it's sort of a very quick, summary of what I've been doing. Um, aside from that, I've visited like, uh, I, I don't even I don't even remember the count actually of too many cities and I talked to too many people. Uh, I've even somehow went to Spain to Barcelona to hang out there and ended up going to the VR convention where I like I it's not even relevant to what we're doing. But hey, you know, VR conventions and talking to people always good, uh, found out some pretty cool things, tried out some nice VR demos, because why not get some contacts? Always nice. Um, yeah, it's like, I not even sure what's going on anymore. But it seems to be working out very nicely. Um, Moving forward, we're basically planning to do more travels. So the next week we got another um, kind of, I guess it's it's a partner slash investor meeting because it's a company that not just works in the fitness field, but they also have a pretty large investment fund and invest into a lot of um, companies that do relevant things. Right. So we are hoping to pitch to them and maybe get at least a letter of intent from them saying, hey, we want to work with you. Maybe we can even get a sit round from them, but we're going to see how that goes. So this is something that is um, essentially up for us to convince. I mean, we made a pitch deck and some basic um, slides that just, you know, give our represent our idea to uh, people. But uh, yeah, it's like it's a bit weird. Um, we do have to incorporate finally within the next three weeks, I believe, uh, because we owe 5% to the entrepreneur first, just because uh, we met through them, right? So that was the condition, uh, which is absolutely fine, because you know, it's I, I'd say this meeting is definitely worth uh, 5%. Uh, and you know, if we can get 100k for another five, that will be really nice. If not, well, then there is um, definitely we'll find another uh, other people, I guess, to who would be interested in investing in us because as I said, we already got some uh, letter of intents and uh, potential partnerships, which is basically kind of almost on paper. So it's uh, coming, coming there, getting there. And uh, yeah, MVP, as I said, again, we're working on it. I estimated we should finish the very basic version within like two months. Um, not sure. Um, you know, it's probably not going to be super fancy, but it's going to work. And, uh, you know, we, since um, it's a very straightforward thing, technically, I think I should be able to do the whole thing alone, which is, again, uh, kind of a huge benefit for us at, at the very beginning. But uh, yeah, we're going to see how this goes. All right. Um, I think that's actually all the updates from my side. So I don't really want to go into too much details and names and everything here because I don't think it's relevant. And I don't, you know, I don't really want to uh, do that without talking with my partner first, but uh, whatever. So um, let us, I guess, do some questions and answers. So do you guys have any questions? Uh, maybe you're interested in an in, uh, entrepreneur first program. Maybe you're interested in what we did so far, how we uh, connected to this guys, what he would talk about, how we built the pitch deck and um, all that kind of stuff. 
I will be more than happy to answer your questions. So if you have them, send them right into chat. I'm looking at it. And uh, we can ask about uh, ask why am I, we can talk about startups, software development, or I guess product development in this case, because software development is kind of secondary in this, um, this case, right, or uh, whatever you have in mind. Uh, bear in mind, if you are waiting for JavaScript news live stream, it is going to happen slightly later today, I do have quite a lot of news uh, prepared. Uh, so here, we're going to be talking about the um, startups business and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, feel free to write your questions in the chat if you have them. Uh, if not, then well, that was a very short live stream. And it makes me a bit sad. <laughs> Um, I guess, um, while you're thinking if you have any questions, uh, what I can say is that probably by the next live stream, I will have uh, something to show you. So probably we're going to have a website, we are probably going to have uh, some sort of a prototype that I can show you. And uh, we likely we're going to be incorporated already, because as I said, we will need to incorporate within the next three weeks. So yeah, it is it is going terrifyingly fast and terrifyingly good, which is kind of, you know, strange for me, to be honest, because um, all my previous tries to do a startup were over complicated. So I always had a very complex technology behind them. And uh, well, okay, not always, but like 80%, I guess. Uh, and uh, every time it was really, really hard to sell it because you had to explain what this technology does. In this case, we have a product that is dumb as hell, you literally, you know, okay, you exercise and you get shit for that. And um, it is really simple in sort of product development, software development area. And then the main problem, in my opinion, would be basically marketing it, getting users and then getting the partners on board, which is kind of the egg and uh, chicken problem, right? Because to get partners, you first need users and to get users, you need partners who would give away the stuff. So yeah, we are, um, we're gonna see how that goes. Okay, so guys, any questions? Um, doesn't really seem so, so far, actually, but uh, it can be. Um, come on, where's what, what? Chat, come on, there we go. Okay, um, yeah, looks like no questions so far. I guess I guess you uh, either my explanations was that good or <laughs> on the opposite that bad that you don't really know what to ask. Well, I will think positive and think that was a that good. So yeah, what else can I tell you? Let me think for a second. What else interesting happened? Yeah, it was actually very interesting how the old connections in the um, area help you uh, in this in this like in the startup matter. So basically, um, What's it like? Okay, so here we go. We have a question. So what's it like to be at EF? Um, so here's the thing, right? So the way that EF works is that they literally take 50 people, throw them into one room and say, Okay, find a co founder and then come up with a new idea and then start building it. Um, what I noticed is that most of people who come to EF uh, are um, already have either the exact idea or maybe even already a finished product that they want to work and they want to sell and some of them succeed actually. For example, there is a Tal Perry who I think um, he, there was an article about him on a tech crunch recently. Yeah, light tag, he launched the company light tag. And uh, uh, yeah, he's he, he came in with a product and he was like, okay, you know, I need I need a business person who can help me sell this stuff. And he found one and it's, it's great for him. So it's like the other part of people, uh, what I saw is that the guys who come with a pretty cool expertise, so they all of them are really interesting and um, they are not entirely sure what they want to do. At least this was my impression from it. So they end up going around and trying to connect with different people form teams and come up with the ideas without completely understanding what they want to do. And um, what this results in is that they um, like some of the guys have already formed like, you know, seven, six teams and broken up and formed again and, and so on and so forth. So like they break and form teams every day. There's like a do dozen of new Slack messages about that. So we have like a Slack bot that um, sends a message every time someone breaks up or someone forms a team. 
And there's like three, four breaks up and new teams per day. Up to this date still, even there's like a three weeks left. Um, this is the general like sense of it. I was lucky enough to find a really good team from the very start. So instead of uh, like some people just started forming teams on the first day, I was like, uh, I can't do that. I don't know from the very beginning who I want to work with. Because uh, like the thing is that when you form a team, you have to understand that this is the person you potentially will be working with for the next 10 years, right? So if, you're, if your startup is successful, this is the guy that you're going to be waking up in the morning and going to the office or, you know, calling him on Skype, on remote, whatever, and talking to and working over the past, over the next um, decade, essentially. And I cannot really select a person who I'm going to be working over the decade in one day. No, 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 no. Um, hi, Renato. So in my case, I uh, took a week. So from the start of the cohort to the first end of the first week, I was talking to a bunch of people who seemed, in my opinion, fitting because I know that, you know, I'm a good software engineer or a decent software engineer, I guess. I can build things, but I know that I absolutely am terrible at marketing and sales. So for the life of me, I could not sell you anything. And this is probably why I have a terrible numbers on YouTube and Twitch, but still, you know, you guys watching me, so that's good enough for me. <laughs> so yeah, I found a really good uh, guy who's a pretty amazing sales uh, slash uh, business guy. Um, he has pretty insane background if you look at what he did before. Uh, you know, the degree in architecture and then like also a lot of startups and a lot of trying to sell and like, you know, the sales is not exactly his profession, but he's so good at it because he was doing it for past 10 years or something. So we've kind of fit together pretty well. And I would say we are a really good team. So we are uh, working together very well. We understand each other. We always find compromises. So it's, it's kind of good. Um, this is the team side, right? So the other side of the F is the lectures they provide or kind of support they provide, I guess. Uh, so uh, over the duration, um, over the duration of the whole EF thing, what you do is every week you have at least one lecture where uh, they talk about something and they sort of was ramping up the topic. So they started in the very beginning, it was like, hey, what is the, how do you come up with a good idea? Then, you know, how do you do a quick calculations to make sure that your idea is, will fly? How do you talk to customers? How do you pitch the stuff and, you know, all that stuff. Um, and those lectures, they are really good. Uh, they are, um, Basically, um, they are very uh, well structured. But the thing is, as I already said in the beginning, so if you um, ever, if you ever did a startup, you won't find anything new in there. So um, it's kind of a, a bit. So it was uh, weird for us because we just basically was okay. You know, we're gonna go and do our thing. Um, rep <laughs> repeat the topic from the beginning. Uh, yeah, no. Um, Okay, uh, no swearing in the chat, please. I'm just gonna ban you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so let me go through the other question. Um, so, okay, so this was the part about the EF. Um, so what is the product? Yeah, so as I said in the beginning, the product, uh, yeah, I mean, you will, yes, yeah, so of course, there will be a video on YouTube if you miss some parts and wanna hear the whole thing again. The VOD will be on my YouTube channel, you can watch it, but I can go through some parts again. So basically the question is, what is the product? The idea is super straightforward, as I said, the, uh, it's a super um, stupid business idea, which actually seems to work. So the idea is that we want to reward people for living healthy lives, right? So in the first step, and that would be to give you rewards for, um, exercising. So the idea that you install the mobile app, or maybe it's going to be a web app at some point, you link your um, fitness devices to it, like, you know, Fitbit or Apple Watch or whatever you use when you exercise, you exercise and then for your exercises, you can gain specific things like money from your insurance company, or merchandise from your favorite brand. For example, if you're a runner, you would uh, get um uh, you know, discounts for maybe Nike shoes because they are interested in guys like you, right? So they want to promote their stuff through the influential runners, essentially. 
so yeah, this is the gist of it. And uh, we're working on it. So let's see the questions. Uh, how much profit have you made this year? So we have not yet made any profit because we are early stage startup. Essentially, we don't even have an MVP yet, right? So this is the whole point of EF. We started doing the whole thing um, five weeks ago, right? Even less, four weeks ago because I took the first week to form a team. And uh, over these four weeks, we talked to people, we found out the problem, we figured out how can we solve it and we started getting the letter of intents from the uh, people to, or from the companies, from the partners who would say, you know, once we open the company, they will work with us. So no profit yet, but uh, potentially there is quite a market here because there's a lot of very similar apps uh, in the Play Store and App Store, but they are all uh, suffer from uh, various degrees of issues, you know, ranging from technical problems and go into the sort of partner problems where they don't deliver rewards that are interesting for people. You know, there's like, uh, there was a very interesting app in India that did more or less what we want to do, I guess on a basic level, but the rewards was like, you know, 10% coupon for like fast food. I was like, why is that in a fitness app? That was a bit weird. Um, all right. Uh, How's your gains progress going? Um, I'm not, what do you mean by gains progress? Uh, so as I said, again, we don't really have MVP yet, so we're not gaining users, right? But we already have uh, one letter of intent and one company that is ready to partner with us. So there's like one and a half partner essentially. Um, and we have another meeting with a potential partner slash investor because they're a really big German company uh, coming next week. So I'm going to be traveling again and we're going to be pitching our staff uh, on Wednesday, I believe, um, to them to see, you know, if we can work out the stuff. How are the EF sessions and the teachers? Interesting to follow. Um, so the, as I said, the, they know their stuff and the sessions are uh, interesting, especially if you never did anything like that, right? So if you ever did anything related to startups, if you tried to do your own startup or if you read any business books or if you read a lot of them, you will know immediately what they're going to talk about because they're not really, you know, have any incredibly unique knowledge that they are not sharing anywhere. They actually, I think they're actually publishing everything on their YouTube channel. Give me a second. Um, uh, let me just have a look. Yeah, so they, they have a YouTube channel and they publish a lot of things in there and they have a Medium um, a blog where they also publish quite a lot of what they talk about. So it is kind of... Um, common knowledge basically, right? But if you never work with startups, having someone give you this knowledge within a 45 minute session is really invaluable. But if you already knew that it's like, you know, okay, whatever, it's like, I already know that. So whatever, I'm just gonna go do my stuff, right? Um, how you get admitted to EF? Um, you just, so basically they have the application process. Uh, you just go to entrepreneur first, right? I think it's entrepreneurfirst.com or UK or whatever it is. Oh, it is joinef.com. And there's an apply now button where you can select, uh, I don't think do they have a, so basically they have uh, three locations right now, I believe, or maybe already four. Is it, it's uh, London, Berlin, um, Singapore and China. I don't know if they started already in China and Hong Kong, I believe. Uh, and the idea is that you apply essentially with your CV, so your story. So what you do is they ask you a bunch of questions like, you know, what's your name? What's your education? What you worked before? What do you think is like your, uh, what do you excel at? So essentially you just have to fill out a form. And if they find your form interesting enough, they will contact you and set up a video interview where you just have to sit and talk to one of the guys. And then uh, if he finds you interesting, you will probably have another interview with a different uh, person from the team. And they basically, after that, they just decide, you know, if we're good enough or not for, their, uh, for the cohort. Um, the bar is quite high because uh, the people, as I already said in the previous, I think, podcast, the people I've met there are all really exceptional. I like, I don't think there's been even one person in the whole EF cohort it wasn't amazing, like straight off. You just listen to their story and go like, holy shit, man, you did so much cool stuff. So yeah. 
how much are you at the beginning? Um, uh, well, what, what do you mean by how much, how much what's at the beginning? Um, <laughs> I think you missed a verb there. Okay. Um, I'm waiting for you to clarify the question, Jamal, because I am not uh, sure I understand that correctly. Okay, uh, meanwhile, if you have any other questions, feel free to send them uh, into the chat as well. I'm still looking at there. If not, then I guess that's all I could actually say up to this point. Uh, how much people? Okay, yeah. Uh, they don't really disclose the numbers of applications, but they accept around 50 people for every batch. Um, I think the number of applicants was like around 500 or something last time I heard it. So I, those numbers are not official and I don't think they are, uh, they even want, will say that. But uh, yeah, I think it's basically around 10% acceptance rate, which is, you know, not actually terrible. So uh, yeah, uh, essentially you have a 10% chance to get in and you just have to have a convincing uh, form filled, right? You know, present yourself uh, in a compelling manner and then, then just perform good on the interviews and off you go. So it's not not too hard. I mean, I was lucky actually because I haven't heard about them before I got in. They were the ones who contacted me and was like, "Hey, your CV looks nice," uh, which again is good because uh, you know what what uh, basically proves the point is good to have an up to date CV somewhere on your personal website. Uh, yeah, so they basically say, you know, your CV looks interesting. Do you want to talk to us and see if you kind of want to get in? I was like, yeah, sure, let's talk. Uh, no, we are not in, uh, so I mean, I'm currently back in Leipzig, but we are like the EF is uh, rented a place in uh, factory Berlin. So in um, uh, factory Gölitzer Park, to be precise, it is kind of in the middle of the city, uh, middle of the center, uh, God damn it, in the city center, this is what I want to say. <laughs> It is a pretty nice building and uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff there. And uh, you know, it's a kind of, um, I guess it's okay to work there. There are two problems with it I have. The first one is that there's still construction going on a bit. So it's a new building, so they're not completely finished it yet. So there's like literally construction workers outside and sometimes it can get very noisy. And the other problems is that there are not that many isolated spaces. So there's more, most of the stuff, they didn't rent any offices, obviously, they rented the community space, so-called. And it's essentially a huge open space where you can work anywhere you want. And when 50 people discuss stuff and try to work together, it gets really noisy. And um, I mean, it was okay at the beginning, but then it became quickly obvious that it's not actually efficient to work there. And uh, especially, you know, if you know exactly what you want to do, if you don't just need to sit and talk to people, uh, you really want to have a space where you can be like isolated, at least for me, right? Especially for the development bit. Um, another problem is that there are so many interesting people and so many interesting problems circulating around is that People just go around and ask other people for feedback, right? That's absolutely normal. And uh, what ends up happening is that instead of working, you spend half of your time just talking to people about their problems, <laughs> which is also interesting, don't get me wrong, but it is uh, essentially a waste of time from the perspective of you know working on your own thing. So yeah, it's kind of, there are places where you can get essentially just hide in this uh, factory building because it's really, really large and there's enough um, like sort of isolated ish spaces, but it was still very distracting. So I, I, anyway, I'm a, you know, person that prefers working from home. So that's what I'm doing right now. But yeah, it's like traveling been uh, dis distracting me from uh, going to a factory way more than I thought it would be basically. Yeah. Okay, any more questions? And if not, we can just wrap this up here. So I'm gonna give you a couple of, um, I guess a minute to think if you have anything else you wanna ask. If not, then uh, yeah, we can just uh, wrap this up here and I will do another of these updates in two weeks, three weeks, once we incorporate, I guess, and have a website and maybe some prototype to show so that, you know, I actually have 
something interesting to Sean, I just said, and I look at the talking head over here. <laughs> Don't know how entertaining it is. Uh, what are the technical challenges? What language frameworks did you choose to build MVP? No, no, absolutely. Um, no problems about answering questions. I'm really, really happy to see that you are interested in this topic. So let's go one by one. What are the technical challenges? Uh, well, there's actually not that many. As I said, the app is super stupid. It's literally like, hey, let's grab the data from the fitness devices and then based on some thresholds, reward the user with whatever the partners want to give away, right? Um, programming languages, frameworks, I was, um, for now we're just going with JavaScript and React Native because it's it's easy, right? I And plus this is not your computation heavy machine learning based crazy AI startup. I mean, we're gonna have machine learning at some point, but that can be uh, done as a microservice in the backend, so it doesn't matter. For now, it's just gonna be a React Native for the uh, client, mobile client and uh, Node.js for the server, you know, very straightforward. Okay, um, any other questions? Once again, uh, once we finish the first version of the MVP, I will show it off on stream uh, again, probably in two, three weeks uh, together with the incorporation and all that stuff. So yeah, we are gonna, gonna see how that goes. <laughs> Okay, well, doesn't seem like there are any more questions. So I guess it would be a good point to stop the stream. That was a nice half an hour. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, if you're interested in JavaScript news, I see you later today for BXGS Weekly. If you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to post your questions down below. Um, ask whatever you want. I will be happy to answer uh, any questions you might have as usual. And uh, I see you during the next live stream in a couple of weeks. Bye.